welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Kelly from Kelly's Creative Comforts and today I would like to talk about tension. Sewing is supposed to take you to your happy place. So when you feel that your machine is acting up and your tension is off, it, it just totally takes away that whole happy place. Sometimes it is so discouraging for people, they just want to put their machine aside, they don't want to sew anymore, they just get very frustrated. But tension isn't all that difficult once you understand the principles behind it and how to adjust your tension. So what I'm going to show you today is exactly that. How to adjust your tension when things go wrong with your machine. How the tension works and the basic function behind tension is exactly the same on every sewing machine. It doesn't matter if you have one that is highly computerized or one that is extremely old that you've had forever. The tension principles are the same. How and where you change that tension is what is a little bit different from machine to machine. So whether your tension discs are external, for an example on my long arm machine the tension is external, or whether it is completely internal like it is on some of my computerized machines. Here is some of the different choices you have for changing your tension. It doesn't matter if you have an outside tension knob, like on this machine right here where you just turn. Now on my computerized machine, this is where I adjust the tension. This is a touch screen, so I just change it up or down by pushing the button. So this symbol right here, that symbol right there, is sort of the universal symbol for tension. So if you see that, tent, that symbol on your computerized sewing machine, that generally means that is where your tension adjustment is. Sometimes your tension knob is in the front, like on this machine. Sometimes your tension knob is in the top, like this. But once you figure out where to change your tension, the rest of it is all the same. Now, because these tension discs are external, this is the easiest machine to show you actually how the tension discs work. On a lot of machines, these tension discs are internal. But this one, see right in here where the thread goes in? That is your tension disc. So these two pieces of metal right here and here create your tension. So when your foot is in the down position, these discs close and create the tension on your sewing machine, which with between that and the tension on your bobbin create the perfect stitch. Now, when my foot is in the up position, see these tension discs separate and they are able to accept the thread. So they're, they're like floppy. Put the foot down and they are now closed. And to get them to separate, I have to put quite a bit of pressure on them to get them to separate. And that is how the tension discs work whether externally on this machine or internally on other machines. So think of your tension as a tug of war between your top thread and your bobbin thread. And you don't want anyone to win that tug of war. You want them to be completely balanced so that the stitch is formed in between your layers of your fabric. So if this is your top thread and this is your bobbin thread, you don't want anyone winning. If my top thread is too tight, you're going to see your bobbin thread on the top. And if your top thread is too loose, you're going to see that on the bottom. So it's backwards to what you would normally think. If your stitching is nasty underneath, it's something to do with your top tension. If it's nasty on the top, it's something to do with your bottom tension. So you need to balance those two, but for the most part, you can adjust your tensions and get them correct just by adjusting your top tension either up or down depending on what your thread is doing. Assuming you're not doing something different, free motion quilting just kind of throws that all out the window but that's a whole different video. Now most machines the standard tension is set between somewhere between three and five. Now that will assume that I am doing same weight thread top and bottom. If I change that where I'm putting a lightweight thread in the bottom and a heavier weight thread on the top, well then I'll need to adjust my tensions. And sometimes just to get that perfect stitch, you need to adjust your tension just a little bit. When I am sewing and my tension isn't quite right, I want to make very small increment changes. So if I am set at four and it's not quite right, I will go to maybe four and a quarter and check it. 
And if that's not then four and a half, I'll go up by very small increments. I don't want to go from say four to nine on my tension dial because then I'm going to be too far the other way. So you make small increments, do a test and check your tension. Now, as a machine quilter, I check my tension on every single quilt that I make because if something changes on the thread path, if I am using polyester batting in place of a cotton batting, there's less density, so the tension may change just a little bit. So I check my tension before I do every single quilt to make sure that my tension is perfect. That will make sure my seams are secure and it will make sure I have a happy experience while I am sewing. Okay, so here we are at my machine. I have a darker thread in the top and a lighter thread in the bottom bobbin, just so you can see the difference in the tension. And what you want to have, what you want is a balanced stitch on the top, so you can see those stitches, and you want the same look on the bottom so that you can actually see individual stitches. I'm not seeing any of my top thread on the bottom and I'm not seeing any of my bottom thread on the top. So that is the perfect tension. Let's see what happens when you make adjustments to that tension knob. So I have taken my tension down to zero and this machine will probably not like that very much, but here we go. Oh, oh, there we go. It's not liking it at all. So this is what is referred to as a bird's nest where the tension is just horrible. Looks, looks kind of okay on the top. Right, I can see my stitches, it looks not that bad. Well, except for that right there where it kind of jumped on it. But this is the underneath. And this is, this is what happens a lot to people. They get this underneath and they don't know what's going on because it's underneath on the bottom. They assume it has something to do with the bobbin thread, but you can see it's the brown thread, which is my top thread that is the issue, not my bobbin thread. Now, a lot of times this is created because when we are threading our machine, we thread it with the foot in the down position. And when the foot is in the down position, the tension discs are closed and they don't accept the thread. That's why one of the first things that I always do, if I happen to, to, to be talking to somebody who's getting a thread nest, or I personally get a thread nest, I just unthread my machine, I double check, make sure my foot is in the up position, re-thread, and I'll try it again. And a lot of times that is what cures it. The, the thread just wasn't in the tension discs properly. So now going on and assuming that I have threaded my machine correctly, now I have taken the machine all the way up. And you can hear that it's not happy. It's gathering the fabric just a little bit. It's just not happy at all. So this is what starts to happen when it is too tight. Looks okay on the bottom, but the top is terrible. So when the tension is that bad, I can actually just pull that top thread right out. It hasn't sunk into the fabric at all. So now I have taken my machine back up to regular tension. And you can see, again, on the top, the stitches are formed nicely, and on the bottom, the stitches are also beautifully formed. Now, that's the two extremes. Most of the time, when you are playing with your tension, it's just not quite right, where you, you know, you're seeing a little tiny bit of your bottom thread on the top or a little bit of your top thread underneath. So that is where you would just make small adjustments. So there you have it. Tension is not scary, nor should you be afraid to adjust your tension if you need to. And maybe the next time you get a bird's nest, you'll stop and think, hmm, I wonder if I threaded my machine correctly. That is always, always, always my first step. Unthread the machine, make sure my foot's in the up position, rethread my machine, and most of the time that fixes those nasty little bird's nests underneath. So remember, it doesn't matter what machine you sew on, all the tensions are the same, it's just where you adjust your tensions, whether it's a dial or a knob or a push button or a touch screen, it doesn't matter, it's all the same. Now I know from personal experience that when you are sewing and it all looks like everything is beautiful on the top, your stitch looks perfectly formed, and then you turn it over and look at the back and it is nasty. That can be very demoralizing. 
The only bright spot to that is if your tension is that bad, it's really easy to pick out all those nasty stitches. I hope this little tutorial has helped you understand tension just a little bit better so that if you are having an issue with your tension, it doesn't ruin your day and doesn't make you want to throw your sewing machine out the window. Sewing takes me to my happy place and I hope it can help take you to your happy place. If you've liked this tutorial and found it helpful, please hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I upload more videos. Until then, this is Kelly of Kelly's Creative Comforts. Happy sewing! Mm -hmm.